Right, so I'm going to try and explain uh, elliptic curve encryption and the methods that we use. So in encryption, uh, we have two main methods, which is symmetric key encryption. Symmetric key encryption, we have the same key to encrypt, then we have to decrypt, and we have AES, 3DES, and, and so on. So this is good for keeping our, our messages private. And then we'll have some way that we can actually exchange the key. So we either use Diffie-Hellman method or we can actually use a method called public key encryption or an asymmetric encryption method. So with public key encryption, what we have is two keys. We have a public key and we have a private key. So the keys work together. So if we encrypt with one, we can all, we need to decrypt with the other one. So we often use this when we're signing a message. We sign something, we encrypt it with our private key, and then anyone can have our public key, and then they will decrypt what we've signed and then check that we own the private key. So we should always keep our private key uh, secure uh, so that it can't be released if someone finds that key, then they can actually sign things for us. So how does elliptic curve encryption actually work? Well, it has a function that looks like this. So this is mathematically our function here. So in this case, this is y squared plus x to the 3 plus minus 3x plus 5 gives us this and uh, this is symmetric across mirror image across the the x-axis here so what we do with elliptic curve is that we take a point p and then we create a gradient a scalar that will take us to a point q and then we have a gradient a random number gradient equal to the value of n. So n is our private key. So we have a generator here, and this is a point on this elliptic curve. And then we multiply that x, y point by, by a value of n, our private key, and we get a value of q. So if we write that out, then q is equal to n times p. So we also have mod of a prime number to make sure that it's even more difficult to, to solve this. So it might look easy to solve, uh, but if, if the value of n is large and the value of p, the prime number is also large, and we know q and p, it's actually very difficult for us to determine n. Mathematically, it's really difficult to find the value of n that works, even though we know P and Q. Okay, so that's that's what we uh, that's what we have. Okay, so we have a value of P, value of Q. Uh, P is what we call our generator value, and it's a point on on the elliptic curve. We have n, which is a random number, very large number. We multiply that and we end up with a value of q, which is uh, another number there. And we take mod p and hopefully that, that, will, that will work out. Okay, so elliptic curve is used in Bitcoin type technology and the equation that we use for Bitcoin is this one here, y squared plus x cubed plus 7. So the value of a, so this is the value of a and the value of b is what defines our elliptic curve. So if we just plot that one, 0 and 7, and this should give us our elliptic curve there. Okay, so this is y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7 is the elliptic curve that we use for uh, bitcoins for generating our public and private keys. Okay, so if I generate a new elliptic curve key for our bitcoin, uh, we see here this is our private 
key. Okay, so this value here is our value of n. Okay, and that is our private key, and we shouldn't uh, release that. We then have a public key here, and the public key uh, we distribute our prime number here. As we see, we have our value of a and b, which defines our curve. We then have our generator, which is a point on the curve here. And then that will give us our, pub, our public key. So our public key we can uh, distribute because it's difficult if we know the public key and the generator to find the value of n. I hope that's that's clear uh, from from there. Okay. So what I've done is I've used o OpenSSL to generate uh, a key pair uh, for me. We can see I'm using a 256-bit random number for my private key and then this is the public key of using and this defines the elliptic curve that uh, I've set up. That's just the default one there. Uh, but we can use the one that, uh, that fits uh, Bitcoin uh, technology. So we can see here that, uh, that our key, our value of n, is is a 256 bits, 32 bytes, so it's quite a large uh, number there for this value. That's the n value there, and then there's the the value here, and it's difficult <laughs> to determine from the generator and the public key uh, because they're very large numbers what that value would be. Uh, after that, we will then get our value here, which will be in the form of an x and a y uh, coordinate. Okay, so that gives us our our details there. We also have a prime number that we're going to be using. And again, that's an extremely large private number, a uh, prime number. Okay, so now if we, we can distribute our public key and our generator, uh, and our prime number, and it's really difficult to find the value of n that we've actually used. Computationally, it's difficult. With RSA, what we have, the strength, is that we multiply two prime numbers together, p and q, and that creates a value of n, and then it's actually quite difficult to factorize these, to factorize this number to find the two prime numbers. Unfortunately, this leads to very large encryption keys. 1,024 bits is a typical key size, where with elliptic curve, the same strength is 168 bits. RSA is quite power intensive, CPU intensive and memory intensive. It also eats up a lot of battery power if we're using it for an embedded device. It's hungry in terms of computational power, where elliptic curve is much smaller keys. So elliptic curve ciphers are often used in, in low-powered uh, applications to provide the identity of a device such as a smart card. Okay, so here we are. We have got our public key. We've got a private key. There's our generator and our, and our prime number. Now what we have to do is to be able to send our message. So if we have a uh, Bob and Alice. Okay, so Bob is going to send Alice something secret. So Alice will share her public key, uh, the generator and the prime number, and also the A and the B value, which defines the, the curve. Okay, so she, she has distributed this one, this one and uh, this one here. But she keeps the value of n private. That's her private key. So Bob then takes the message and ciphers two different elements of it. He takes a random number, k, a nonce, completely random number, and then multiplies it 
by p the generator and then also mod p remember we bring in our prime number there and multiply them together and we'll get our first cipher the next one is the second one we'll take the message that he wants to send and then we'll add on k the random number times q the other part of the public key okay so he then sends those two values over to alice alice will then take uh, so that's the that's the cipher text so then take the cipher text you'll take this one minus uh, her private key times c1 okay so it's that cipher minus remember it's still mod p when we're doing the calculations here times n that gradient random number times c1 so c2 is the message plus k and q is n times p minus n cipher 1 k p and one thing you should notice here is that these this part and then it's mod p this part here cancels itself out so we end up with the message okay so in this way we have managed to encrypt we create our public key and our private key and as i said it's really difficult even though you know these two numbers and the prime to actually work out computationally what that value of n is what the scalar uh, is so uh, we end up with fairly small uh, values for our our, our our encryption 160 bits is equivalent to 1024 bits in rsa that's equivalent to about 80 bits in terms of symmetric key in encryption okay so public key private key uh, that's how we do our calculations and then that's how we get our message back okay so that's elliptic curve and elliptic curve is used as i said in bitcoin type uh, technology